back to Farming Simulator and today I thought it would be interesting to have a look at the different GPS options that are available in Farming Simulator 22. These are all PC only mods because they are script mods and script mods are not allowed on console in FS22 or 19 or before that I think. Anyway, um, so the three that I'm going to have a look at are Guidance Steering, Enhanced Vehicle, and Vehicle Control Add-on. There may be others that I've missed, but I think those are the main three. And I think for most people, Guidance Steering is what they think of when they use GPS. Um, personally, it is the one that I use the least having played with the other two. I'm going to run through the pluses and not necessarily minuses, but I run, run through each of them, talk about what I like about them, what I don't like about them. I'm not going to tell you which one is best. I think it's a very personal thing as to which one you prefer, depending on the functions that they have and the features that they bring. Um, it's worth noting that guidance steering can be installed with either enhanced vehicle or vehicle control add-on you cannot use enhanced vehicle and vehicle control add-on together as they do very similar functions so let's start off having a look at guidance steering i guess for guidance steering we are starting in the store because you have to pay to add it to vehicles so um it's a little extra toggle down here and it's going to cost you £15,000 to add guidance steering to each individual vehicle. So, and that's a difference between guidance steering and enhanced vehicle or VCA. The other two you can just use without paying. Now, depending on your view on it, this is a good or a bad thing. Um, Obviously, it means you could use it on tractors where it's wholly inappropriate to not have GPS built in. But also on, you know, on a, on a modern tractor, would you really be charged extra for adding GPS? I don't know. I've never brought a modern tractor in the real world. But, you know, personal choice, I guess. Um, I actually use guidance steering on my um, Farming the Decade series to include the cost of adding GPS to vehicles. So I don't actually use guidance steering myself. I use VCA, but I use it to add cost to vehicles to add GPS. So um, most vehicles, it won't affect the visual. I think some do. I think some are integrated with guidance steering and you'll get a visual change as well. So we are going to grab us a tractor and they're going to lease it because I am. Um, and we will jump in and you will see some different things. I'm going to move the track into the sunlight um, and we'll talk about what you can see because I also have enhanced vehicle running at the moment because it means I don't need to save and reload to show you that as well. But guidance steering adds the little um, HUD above the gear shifter. So we've got three indicators there. We've got one that tells us whether guidance steering is switched on, one which tells us whether it is active, and one which tells us which row we are on. So I'm going to grab an implement and we'll head over to a field and we'll just get it quickly set up so you can see what it's like. I'm not going to do a proper tutorial on this. This is not a tutorial. I'm just comparing the different ones that are available um, and the different features they have. So I'll be back in a moment. So, as I said, this is not a full tutorial for guidance steering, but I am going to run through a little bit of the features so that you can see what it looks like. So the first thing we are going to do is hit Alt-C to turn it on. So you can see that's brought up the little satellite is on and the road counter, which is the one above it. The one below the steering wheel tells you when it's actually active. And if we do control S, that opens up the guidance steering menu. And this brings us to one of the features that I want to talk about, which is unique to guidance steering, which is the ability to save and load tracks. Um, so a few reasons that's really good. One, you know, if, if you're constantly doing the same jobs in the same fields, you can run the same GPS course, but also things like multiplayer. So for example, when Kartek and I are doing multiplayer, we will, one of us will create the course and save it. And then the other one can load it. So we're both running the same GPS course. So that's quite cool. 
Um, the other thing that you can do from this menu is guidance steering gives you two options for how you set your track. You can either do an AB line, so you, with that you drop a waypoint, you drive forward, so you maybe drive along the edge of the field, you hit another waypoint, it creates a line, or you can do um, a heading, and I, I much prefer the heading approach. The other two work on actually vehicle direction rather than typing in a heading but for this one you would hit set a and then you type in the heading that you want i quite like that um we've got the option for so once you've got a track set you use um alt x to turn on and off with guidance steering um you can when you get when you get up to headland you can tell it to stop gps and you well, you can turn GPS off or you can tell it to stop the tractor and that's the distance that it'll go from the edge um, you can have lines on or off and with your implement you can auto set the width one of the things I don't like about guidance steering is A, it's in feet and I generally most implement widths are in meters in game and you can't type in an actual number so you have to use this interface which I don't particularly like so it will auto width for you so you don't have to worry about it quite so much so I'm just moving down the uh, so I, I don't particularly use guidance steering a lot so I'm just going to get the menu back up and I am going to set a heading and I'm going to I should have turned the lines on as well there are keyboard shortcuts for all this stuff as well I don't actually know them um, but we're then going to hit Alt R. That doesn't seem to want to auto width, so we'll do auto width. There we go. So that's done the auto width. We'll drop it down, and then if we do Alt X, you'll see the line goes green, the little steering wheel comes on, and that's that. Um, GPS, so guidance steering, doesn't have an automatic turn mode. The other two do. Now it. All three of them integrate with uh, Headland Management, the uh, another really cool mod. I do have a tutorial on that, on an older version of that. So you can use it with that, um, but you can't generally just plow, just drive up to Headland and have the track to turn around. You have to do some work yourself. So we will uh, stop. I shift across a row, you'll see that it will increment, so it's gone to minus one. Um, we'll just finish turning around and then we'll hit Alt X again and drop it down and off we go. So that's that's guidance steering. I say it's not a full tutorial, just give you some idea of the features. Let me just check my notes to make sure that I have grabbed them all. I know you will have lost game sound as I do that, but you know is what it is so yeah the main i think the main benefits of guidance steering and you may not see them as a benefit is one there is a cost implication so depending on how you've got your game set up it makes having gps harder um and the fact that you can save and share tracks i think that's a really good feature so let's have a look next at enhanced vehicle because i have that active as well at the moment so i'm going to turn off GPS if I can remember the key there we go so that's turned off GPS um, and I will get set up to show you enhanced vehicle I guess the first thing with enhanced vehicle is currently it is only available through the creators github I'll put links to all of these below anyway so you can go and find it um, it is a lot more than just GPS. So you will see around the uh, the, the speedo on here, we've got a lot of extra information that enhanced vehicle brings in. So the um, the six little boxes at the top are to do with the GPS function. Um, next to that, below it, we've got um, differentials. We've got four wheel drive. We've got a parking brake. Underneath the speedo, we've got our mass, our weight. Um, and then in the top right hand corner, We've got um, damage and paint for the current vehicle that we're in and all the things that are attached to it and how much fuel we've got, how much death we've got and how much fuel we're burning. So it is a lot more than just GPS. The um, one of the downsides is that you can't save courses like you can with guidance steering. Personally, 
I only use that feature when I'm doing multiplayer, so less of an issue for me. And the way you set your track for this is essentially the point you're at and the direction you're pointing. So you can change, so you can open up the menu. I have a macro keyboard set up for this mod because the key combinations, there's quite a lot of key combinations and they're quite complex. You can either see them on the GitHub or if you go in to the in-game controls and scroll down, they are all in here. Um, if I keep going and keep going, there we go, they are all in here. So I am going to mostly be using my macro keyboard, but I'll try and mention some of them as we go through. So to open the menu is control and numlock. Um, and this has got some of the settings. You don't really need to change too many of them, but there is a headland mode and we'll talk about that in a moment. So as to what, what the uh, vehicle is going to do, you can choose how the lines are shown. There are quite a few options for how the lines are shown and the lines will auto turn off, which I don't think guidance steering does. You can choose a snap to angle. So I said the, the way enhanced vehicle works is it's where you are and the direction you're pointing, but you can put some, um, granularity on that so if you want to be running on you know 0 90 270 or whatever you can choose that um you know maybe 15 degrees something like that um you'll see in a moment it shows you how tracks either side you can choose how many you want um and then we've got all of the other hud settings not doing a full tutorial on this this is about the gps functionality so the next one i believe is right control end so i have a keyboard macro set up for this it's not it is whatever that key is so if i now bring the lines up um let me just go and check what that was i'm back nothing like being prepared hey so to to set the lines like you can see here is right control and numpad to a lot of this uses the numpad um and then it's also calculated the width for us but if you needed to recalculate that it's right control one so and as you can see we've got our, our lines and then we've got the tracks either side um we can cycle through the types of lines so we can have just that we can have both we can have none and as i said the lines do auto turn off as well um you'll see in the right top right hand section of the the gps hud there's a bit that covers headland mode and so you can cycle through um do nothing you can turn around or you can stop cruise control i quite like the stop cruise control and then you can choose the distance from it so five meters is obviously the working width or you can manually cycle through and pick how far away you want to stop um, I like to go for about three times the working width. So to cycle through those is um, right shift and then num plat, num pad slash or multiply. Um, so I'll leave a link to the GitHub with all the controls. There are quite a lot. You can manually shift them all around. You can do that in all of these, so that's common. Um, and then to enable it, I believe it is right control end so you can see now that everything's gone green um and if i lower this down and hit go and i'll get it so we can see the lines so we can see the lines there we go so you can see we're running along the lines and when we get to the end we'll get when we get 16 meters from the headlands cruise control will switch off and the vehicle will stop um I did say that the that this and VCA can both turn at the headlands and you can set this to auto turn as headland mode um, but we'll just let it stop that didn't want to see the headland for some reason so, um, it does generally work quite well so um, if you guys actually want a, a tutorial on how this works then uh, Stick a comment below. I, I'll, I can put together a proper tutorial. I just want to show you the different features. And um, this is currently one of my favorite GPS options. I really like the way it handles headlands when it's working. Um, and the flexibility it has. It has a lot of options for how you can set things up. So, um, and you know, you've got, you've got your four wheel drive. You've got your, so I can do oh, four wheel drive off. So, 
that's, a, that's an option. You can turn on and off the uh, steering, the, the uh, diff locks. And nice thing that this and VCA both include as well is you can, without having to cycle through the implements, you can raise and lower the front and rear implements um, independently. I really like that. I know you can do it in game with control V, um, but this lets you do the two separate ones separately. So it's quite nice when you're mowing or something like that, you can also turn them on and off independently. So yeah, it's a really nice, really nice mod. Um, so that's enhanced vehicle. For me, the disadvantages of this one are the key combinations are slightly more complex, I think. Um, partly more that there are more of them. Um, and that you can't save tracks and the game doesn't remember them I don't think either so if you quit out of the game your track won't be saved so let's uh, I'm gonna need to quit the game and reload with VCA enabled so I've reloaded I've switched from enhanced vehicle to VCA as I said both of those will work with guidance steering so you can have both of them enabled obviously they add a lot of other features like diff locks and things. So I find that this is probably the easiest GPS to use. It's why I ended up switching to it as my go-to. Um, again, you don't have to buy it, so it's built into the vehicle. And basically it's one button to get going. Left control W, we are set up, ready to go. Um, so there, it, it's auto detected the width is generally pretty good if you need to uh, to recalculate it's left control left alt w if it doesn't pick the width up if you hit left control c you get into the menu as said this bca has a lot more than just gps i'm not going to go through all of them these are the the gps options so you can choose whether you whether the uh, the lines stay visible or not how big they are again the snap angle you can manually set the working width. I really like that feature. If uh, if it hasn't picked it up automatically, you can correct it and the same with the offset. So that's really nice. Um, and BCA does um, turning at the end of the rows really well. You can choose whether you want to skip a row or not. Um, and you can do the the turn at the press of a button it's really nice yeah all three of these integrate with headland mode as well if you want to make use of that um vca does a bunch of other stuff it messes with how the transmission and stuff works i never play with that it does have manual traction control and differentials i quite often play with that um so i've uh, i've stuck those on and that gives you the little hud just under the gear selector um and then you can turn on rear diff, that's right control hash. Um, four wheel drive is right control and comma. Or at. Um, and then right control, right square bracket is front diff. Um, so I'm going to actually stick it so the lines are on permanently, so they're a bit easier to see. So you can do always on, you can do if inactive switches them off after a moment. And high gives you higher lines and always on high. So there you go. We've got nice big lines that we can see nice and easily. Um, and off we go. If we wanted to reset it, we can do um, left alt W. That clears it away. Left control W. We're straight back in. Um, and then if I wanted to do a headland, I could lift up. And then I can do left alt and d and that will turn me to the right by one and then i can drop back down obviously you need to plan your turn um, and then i can do left alt a and do another turn obviously you would also want to lift your implement up and as you can see it's struggling to make the turn in one go so what we could do is we could do we could change this to two and i'm going to so one of the other nice things about VCA is if you press four, it gives you access to three cruise control speeds. So we're going to go now and we'll do a little bit and then I will lift up 
and we will do two lanes and the tractor can now make the turn so you can do skip rows really easily with the uh, the lane change function of VCA again not going to do a full tutorial on VCA just going through the different features that all of the GPS options have this one you cannot save courses so you can't share courses and tracks with other players but it will remember it if you save and close and load back up it will keep it saved and you can go off and do whatever you want and the last track is generally saved which is quite cool um, so just to run through the three quickly we had guidance steering um, you have to buy that installed to add it to the vehicle and I think the big plus for that one is that you can save the courses and share them. Um, enhanced vehicle, automatically available on any vehicle, includes a whole bunch of other stuff like differentials, park brakes, all that kind of thing. Um, has some really nice features for managing headlands built in. Um, really nice mod. And then VCA, so very similar to enhanced vehicle um in there it has all the other functions very easy to use uh one one simple key combination to get set up and going um and if you go off the track you can just hit the same control w to get back on the track um don't have to buy it has the turning function built in for headlands um and it remembers the course and those, I think, are the three GPS options that are available in-game. I, I think my preference is VCA. I'm really enjoying using Enhanced Vehicle at the moment. I very rarely use Guidance Steering. Um, it's just something how my playstyle has evolved through FS19. I, I initially started using Guidance Steering. It was the first GPS mod that I found. And over time, I, I moved across to VCA. So, um, yeah. so use the one that you like the look of. Try different ones out. See which one you actually enjoy using. Um, Guidance Steering and VCA are both on Mod Hub, so you, if you enjoy them, go rate them five stars so that the modders know you appreciate them. And I'll have links for all of them below. And if you've enjoyed this video, click the like button. Any comments, questions, suggestions, whatever, stick them below. Um, thank you to the patrons and the YouTube channel members. Appreciate you guys supporting me doing this random stuff. And I will see you next time.